All right, so just to recap, uh, we said in the previous video that a density matrix can be written in this form where we have a square matrix, right, with coefficients or with elements row 0, 0, row 0, 1, all the way down to row n, n. And, you know, for a, for a qubit system, this capital N is equal to 2 to the lowercase n minus 1, and this, this lowercase n is our, the number of qubits in our system, right? And then each of these elements, rho sub uv, is given by this expression here, right? So it's a weighted average of the probability amplitudes of, of u and v, right, for, for each of the locations in this matrix. And then we said, well, you know, for the diagonal elements where u is equal to v, equal to some, you know, coefficient k, are terms rho kk are given by, well, the weighted sum of this quantum probability of finding the eigenstate k weighted by the classical probability of having that eigenstate in our mixture, right, in our mixed state. But then the question is, what about the off-diagonal elements? Well, we know that the off-diagonal elements are also given by this expression for um, those terms where u is not equal to v, but what do they represent? Let's try to build some intuition on, on what, what they are, right? So, so for that, let, let's maybe look at an example. And, and let's say we have, you know, on one side, let's say we have a pure state, and, you know, let's say it's a, it's a, a state in equal superposition, right? Equal superposition. Um, so what is that? Let's say for a, a one qubit system, that will be all our state plus, which is one over two, zero plus one, right? And let's say, you know, um, on the other side, we have uh, a completely, a completely mixed state. And a completely mixed state is one where we just have with equal probability of occurrence um, of finding each of the eigenstates um, of some basis. So let's say, you know, with probability one half, we can find state zero, and with probability one half, uh, we have um, state one. So there's no superposition on this completely mixed state. Uh, and as we know, superposition is what is one of those ingredients that make quantum states different from classical states, right? So if we look at, at, at the density matrix for this plus state, well, we know that, that what we need to do is just the outer product of the state plus with itself, and in matrix form, that is just uh, one half of um, the matrix one, 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 right? And, you know, if we, if we were to write this as outer products of all the different terms of this um, uh, plus plus, it would be one half of zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, right? Now, um, for our completely mixed state, this, let's call it rho sub c for completely mixed state, is, is you know, the weighted sum of the outer product of each of the states in our mixture. So it's just one half of state zero, zero, plus, one, one, right? Uh, the outer product of one, one. So if we write this in, in matrix form, we, we know that this is a diagonal matrix one, zero, zero, one, right? So here we can see a clear difference, right? So when we have a, a pure state in superposition, right, which is what makes, you know, this, this quantum, a quantum state, we see that the off-diagonal elements are equal to one. And for this completely mixed state where there's no quantumness to it, our off-diagonal elements are zero. And, and that's, that's why we call this, the off-diagonal terms, the coherences, because they give us some information of how quantum a state is, right? When we have a completely mixed state where there's no, no superposition, those terms are zero when we have you know, a, a term with equal superposition, those terms have their maximum value, in this case, one, well, multiply by this, this one half. That means it's, it's the most quantum we can get this state to be. And now the reason why this is important is because, 
As you probably know, one of the challenges in quantum computation, quantum computing in general, is keeping states quantum. And, and this process of a state going from, you know, a, a completely pure state to a completely mixed state, uh, this, is, this is known as decoherence, decoherence. And, you know, in this example, we can have a situation where, you know, we start with, with our state plus, um, and then this could, this could completely go into this, this mixed state um, that we call uh, rho sub c, um, where we have now this off diagonals equal to zero. And, and this is a, a physical process that is part of decoherence and, and is known as defacing. So defacing is this process where our off diagonal terms go, go all the way to zero. And this is a, a, you know, a continuous process, right, where uh, you know, you can, you can see these terms uh, having this exponential decay, um, you know, where they go from, in this particular case, from one down to zero in some, some amount of time. And, and this decay process where our off diagonal terms go from as their maximum value down to zero, um, it's usually associated with a decay time uh, known as, as T2. And, you know, this, this physical process is, is more complicated than, than just the off diagonal terms going down to zero. It, it also comes with some amplitude damping where the probabilities um, of, of the on diagonal terms can shift from, uh, let's say, state zero to state one. And um, usually those are associated with, with a uh, decay time uh, known as T1, uh, but typically T1 is, is uh, larger than T2, so, so T2 is, is, is a value that, that people care a lot about. And, you know, what's important here is that for our density matrix, uh, this off diagonal terms gives us so, give us some information about how quantum our state is, right? So, you know, for, for this, uh, example with one qubit, well, it's easy to, to tell, um, you know, if a state is, is a pure state in equal superposition or a completely mixed state. But what, what about more complicated systems uh, where it might be hard just to look at the off diagonal terms and be able to say, okay, yeah, this is a mixed state or this is a pure state. So for that, there is, um, you know, a metric or a measure uh, that we can use to know how pure uh, or how mixed a state is. And, and that is known as the purity, the purity of a state. And the purity of a state is usually known as um, gamma is equal to the trace of the density matrix squared. And, and this value is um, somewhere in between two to the n, where uh, n is the number of qubits in our system, and n1, n1. So for a pure state, so for a pure state, um, gamma is equal to one, and for a mixed state is, is anywhere between one and one over two to the n. Now, now, why? Why is that? Why is it that, that this gamma is bounded between 1 over 2 to the n and 1? Well, you know, this, this lower bound um, is, is when the state is the most mixed it can be, right? And that is, that is a, completely, a completely mixed state. And, you know, as we described before, a completely mixed state is one where First of all, all, all of our off diagonal terms are zero, right? There's no, there's no quantumness to it. And then the, the diagonal terms, right, which are rho zero, uh, rho zero zero, rho one one, all the way down to rho and n, well, those are equal, right? A completely mixed state is the one where the probability of finding each of the eigenstates is the same, but there's no quantumness to the state, right? So, so rho zero zero equal rho one one equal to the rest of the diagonal elements, right? And since our state needs to be normalized, well, that means that all of these have to be equal to 
1 over 2 to the n, right? Where n is the number of qubits in our system. So that means that if we take the square of this matrix, right? So we do rho squared. Well, that means that we're going to have each of this diagonal elements squared. So we have 1 over 2 to the n squared for all the diagonal elements, right? And now if we take the trace of this, right, that's the definition of, of purity, right? We said the definition of purity is the trace of rho squared. That means that gamma is going to be equal to, well, what is the trace? The trace is just the sum of the diagonal elements. So that means that we have the sum from i equal to 0 to 2 to the n minus 1, right? Because we're starting by 0 yeah, of 1 over 2 to the n squared. Well, what is this? Where all the, all the terms are the same, so we get 2 to the n times 1 over 2 to the n squared. Well, that's, that's just 1 over 2 to the n. So when we have a completely mixed state, we have you know, the, the smallest purity a state can have, and that's given by 1 over 2 to the n, right? So, you know, let's, let's look at a simple example. Let's say we have a two qubit system. So in a two qubit system, our eigenstates are uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? Each with probability of occurrence of 1 over 4, right? And the density matrix for this is just basically, you know, diagonal 1 over 4. 1 over 4, 1 over 4, 1 over 4, and then zeros everywhere. And then if we take the square of that, right? So we're squaring each of these terms. When we take the trace of rho squared, all we get is 4 times 1 over 4 squared, which is just 1 over 4, right? which is equal to 1 over 2 to the 2, right? So 2 qubits, n equal 2. Okay, so now, now we have established um, this lower bound, right? And there, there could be many other mixed states where these probabilities or these diagonal elements are not exactly equal to each other, or where our off-diagonal terms are not necessarily zero, but they're not the maximum value they could be, right? So, but at the other extreme, we have um, a completely pure state, and we said that for a pure state, gamma must be equal to one. But but why is that, right? So, um, instead of of writing down all the math, what I want to do is use um, use Python, and in particular, SymPy, which is a symbolic mathematical package in Python, to to show why this is the case. So. So here, what I'm going to do is first import uh, senpai as uh, sp. Then I'm going to define this n as the number of qubits. And for now, I'm just going to use one. Um, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to define a list with the, all the different probability amplitudes of our states. So those are, those are going to be our alphas. And for, two, for one qubit, it's just two, two probability amplitudes, right? And now I'm going to define a ket vector, which is just a column vector with with this um, alpha terms. And then in, in senpai, I could define the bra version of this by doing the, the transpose conjugate, and that will give me uh, this row vector. But uh, I'm actually not going to do this because I'm going to have to do some replacements later, and it doesn't work so well when I'm actually using the conjugate. So I'm just going to define uh, my row vector with, with symbols uh, of alpha uh, alpha star. And that's just going to denote that this is the uh, complex conjugate of our alphas. And, and when I do this, I get the following row vector. So I have my, my column vector alpha 0, alpha 1, and a column vector alpha 0 complex conjugate, alpha 1 complex conjugate. So then um, here I'm going to define our density matrix of uh, a pure state, right? So we have the diagonal terms are alpha zero, alpha zero complex conjugate, which as we know, are the norm squared of um, alpha zero, or the probability of finding our state in 
uh, state zero and here the probability of finding our state in state one. Right, so now to find the purity of this matrix, well, first I need to square it. And if I square that matrix, I get this, you know, kind of ugly looking uh, expression. But this is where things start getting interesting, right? Because, you know, this squaring is not uh, element wise, right? It's not just squaring each of the terms of the matrix, it's multiplying the matrix with itself. So we're going to get, you know, this alpha zero, alpha zero complex conjugate squared right here. But we also get some terms that come from the the off diagonal terms, right? And, and we get that for for um, this first element here and also for the element uh, down here. But it's still kind of um, difficult to follow. So what I'm going to do next is every time there is this alpha zero, alpha zero complex conjugate, which we know is the norm square of alpha zero, which is the probability of finding the state zero, uh, I'm going to just replace that with P zero, right? So that's what I'm going to do with this, this for loop here. And when we do this, we see now that, you know, we not only get this P zero squared in, in this first element of the matrix, but also some multiplication of the p0 and p1 which you know when we now take the trace which is going to be the sum of the diagonal elements right and here um, that's what we're doing taking the trace of row squared and i have to use this simplify function in simpy because um, since it's a, a symbolic toolbox if i don't do this simplify it's just going to show me this matrix with a tr in front so it's not going to evaluate it uh, would simplify it does evaluate that uh, so what we get is you know just the sum of these two terms but it's doing some factoring here so what I want to do is expand that um, so we get you know p0 squared plus p1 squared but we also get this term that uh, comes from having the diagonal elements right for for a, um, for a completely mixed state we would only get the probability of zero and the probability of one but then we get this extra term coming from the fact that we're squaring and we have some off diagonal terms that show up here when we we now take the trace now but what is this well now if, if instead of looking at this you know an expanded way we factor it well that's nothing other than just p0 plus p1 squared right but because probabilities must add up to one well p0 plus p1 has to be one and one squared is just one so that means that for a pure state our purity is equal to one and you know here in this code i could change this to let's say two qubits and we would just get more terms and you know our um, row square will be just more complicated but uh, if we if we go all the way down and look at um, you know the factoring of of what we get from the trace of row square, it's just the sum of all the the probabilities, the quantum probabilities of finding the each of the eigenstates of our pure state squared, which has to be equal to one. So that's why that upper bound of gamma or the purity is equal to one. So yeah, so that's, I hope that gives some, some uh, intuition for uh, what the off diagonal elements of a density matrix represent.